We are in our last parable for the series, and uh, for our next, we will be having uh, not really a series break, pero para parin siya parable, and then we will be starting on a new book, the book of Malachi. Okay? I think that's uh, two sessions pa. But for tonight, we'll cover the last parable for this series, the parable of the persistent widow. But to some versions, I think they call this the parable of the unjust judge. I'm reading from the NAS version, so whatever version you have, you may follow through your own Bibles or through our PowerPoint in front. Luke 18, verse 1 up to 8. Now he was telling them a parable to show that at all times they ought to pray and not to lose heart. Saying, in a certain city, there was a judge who did not fear God and did not respect man. There was a widow in that city, and she kept coming to him, saying, give me legal protection from my opponent. For a while, he was unwilling. But afterward, he said to himself, even though I do not fear God, nor respect man. Yet because this widow bothers me, I will give her legal protection. Otherwise, by continually coming, she will wear me out. And the Lord said, Hear what the unrighteous judge said. Now, will not God bring about justice for his elect, who cry to him day and night? And will he delay long over them? I tell you, that he will bring about justice for them quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Let's all be seated. Again, we uh, just picked up the title for this parable, the parable of the persistent widow. I'm sure many of you are very much familiar to this Parable. I'm sure maybe most of you have already studied this in your own quiet times. But as I was expecting that, as I was also thinking about that, sabi ko as kitesa nung ginagawa ko to, sabi ko grabe napakahira pala netong passage na to. <laughs> Akala ko uh, uh, that would be a parable that would be just like any other parable. Akala ko rin yung ibang parables na kinover natin. Madali lang. But lo and behold, really, through God's Word, there are, there's just so much truth that we can learn. Always learn as we go through His Word. Before we jump into the passage, may I ask, may I ask, uh, how's our prayer life? How is our prayer life? And I always say this, no? Um, more often than not, the resource that a Christian overlooks is what? Prayer. Prayer. Yun yung palaging na overlook natin mga Christians. We overlook it in these ways. No? We overlook it when we do not have a regular prayer time. Okay? So, napapabayaan natin, nakakalimutan natin. So, that's one way. Another way that we do not utilize Prayer is when we pray, pero yung prayer natin, very, uh, how do we call this? Uh, yung parang cliche na. Uh, Naintindihan yung cliche. It's just something that we have to do every day. Okay, that's another way that we could overlook this. And here's another. When we pray, uh, when we pray, yes, our hearts are, is really there, pero when we pray, uh, we easily, what, give up. We, sabi nga nung verse dito, we lose heart. And the question really is, why do you think are we like that? Why do you think are we like that? What category do we belong to? Dumatay sa una? that we don't really, really pray so much? Or second, when we pray, mechanical na siya? Or maybe when we pray, yung persistence yung kulang na? What category 
do we belong to? Interesting enough, talagang galing ni Lord, eh, galing na Holy Spirit, no? As I was going through this, sabi ko, it really made me think with the truth about prayer. Let's begin, verse 1. Now, he was telling them a parable to show that at all times they ought to pray and not to lose heart. Okay. Again, like uh, what we always do with all the parables that we have covered, uh, especially when Brother JC would emphasize, diba? when we study a parable, we look at the parable, but at the same time, we look at the context on what's happening within the parable and the stories happening beside the parable. So this is Luke 18. Pag tinignan nyo ni Luke 17, you would find in Luke 17, yung last part was when the Lord Jesus was talking to his disciples. And they were talking about uh, the disciples desiring that they would see the kingdom and they were desiring to see the coming of the Messiah. So yun yung context nun. And the Lord said in that particular part, in Luke 17, sinasabi niya, you desire to see, pero you will be deceived. Yeah. Well, that's a long story, no? And that's not what we will cover tonight. Sabi niya, maraming magsasabi na nandiyan na yung uh, Messiah, but really it's not. May mga false Christs, no? If you cross-reference it to Matthew 24, yun yung mangyayari. And the disciples, the Lord Jesus said, would desire that, why? All because yung dinadaanan ng disciples during that time. Uh, they would be going through severe trials. They would be going through severe tribulation. So yun yung last part ng Luke 17. And if you look at the next passage after this section, we would find dito yung about the self-righteous uh, religious leader and the Repentant tax collector. And then after that, makikita mo yung kind of faith that the Lord Jesus really uh, looks into. So, if you look into that, no, uh, all of those surrounding passages, mas maiintindihan natin, mas ma-appreciate natin yung passage natin for tonight. And we will try to see that as we go through the parable. So, from verse 1, we read, the Lord Jesus again introducing them to another parable. And the main reason for the parable that he was about to tell them was for the very truth and command of what? That they were to pray at all times. And not just that, that they were not to lose heart. And that's the command conveyed in this parable. That's the command. And this command for this parable written in verse 1, we will again cover as we go through the verses. Now look at verse 2. Saying, in a certain city there was a judge who did not fear God and did not respect man. Now, from this verse, we would see that this parable is simply located in a certain city. Okay? It's located sa isang city, sa isang syudad. This city in the story, since this is a parable, is actually just a fabricated location, since it's a parable. However, even though that this is just a parable with a fictional fabricated city, we can still safely assume that the Lord Jesus was talking about the people living in the land of Israel. So, because of that, this city that the Lord Jesus mentioned in this parable would be very much like a typical city in Israel. Hence, the other details that would follow in this parable would be very much familiar to the people who would hear this who were living in the land of Israel, in that land of Palestine. Now, sadly, during the time the Lord Jesus gave this parable, the people living in that part of the world had a lot of experience and a lot of story regarding widows and wicked, unjust judges. And in this parable, as the verse writes, we immediately see a wicked, unjust judge, a wicked judge who did not fear God nor did have any respect for man. You know what? Interesting enough, we might think, we might think that this kind of judge in this story would be so unbelievable 
to exist. If you have studied this parable, you might think that this judge would be so unbelievable to exist. Iisipin natin pang telenovela lang itong judge na to. But if we do a little research outside scripture, we would learn that such wicked, unjust judges really did exist before. And I also believe still exists even today. This judge is a man who has absolutely no reverence for God and no compassion for people. No concerns regarding the law of God and completely indifferent to the needs of people and their just causes. Hence, this man is described in the later verse by the Lord Jesus as what? Unrighteous judge. Walang takot sa Diyos, walang awa sa tao. Brothers and sisters, this judge was so unrighteous that it was really impossible to appeal to him on the basis of love for God, more so for the love of man. His wickedness is really to the extreme. Now, the kind of judge described in this passage would be a judge who would be part of a civil court. Okay? This is a civil court judge. And in that part of the world, there would be civil court judges in various towns, villages, or in large cities. Every little town had to have one, and a place like Jerusalem would have many of these civil court judges. Now, even though this kind of judge would not have a position of national responsibility, very much like those judges in religious courts who were interpreting religious concerns or traditions or even the law of the Old Testament, this civil court judge nonetheless would have a very serious responsibility before God to uphold the law of God. And not just that. A civil court like this would also have the responsibility to what? Uphold sympathy and compassion toward people. Brethren, for sure, any judge in Israel would be very familiar with Old Testament passages, Old Testament instructions regarding the role of being a judge. I'm sure they would know what is written about them in Scripture. Here's an example. Look at Second Chronicles 19. Verse 4 up to 6. So Jehoshaphat lived in Jerusalem and went out again among the people from Beersheba to the hill country of Ephraim and brought them back to the Lord, the God of their fathers. He appointed judges in the land in all the fortified cities of Judah, city by city. He said to the judges, Consider what you are doing, for you do not judge for man, but for the Lord who is with you when you render judgment. Now, because of these passages, and likewise other Old Testament passages, we are quite sure that judges during that time knew the role and responsibility of being a judge, even a civil court judge. They knew it. They knew that they were to render judgment in behalf of God. Now, because of this passage and other Old Testament passages, Similar to this, everyone who was ever appointed to any judicial responsibility in Israel would know this passage and responsibility very, very well. Sadly, when we study scripture, we would find that even in the Old Testament, in spite of the clear instruction of God, judges were still corrupt. Why all the details? We will better understand that as we go through the next verses. Now, let's look closely at the word that was used to describe wicked judges. Sinabi, no respect for man. New word the respect, if you look at it in the Greek, it's quite an interesting word. It's actually an interesting verb. Why? This word, respect in the Greek, communicates the truth and meaning of what? To be put. To shame, if you look into that word, to be put to shame. That is why when this word was used in this verse, this verse communicates the truth that this judge, this man, had no respect for man, that he had no shame to whatever he would do towards man. 
during the time in that Middle Eastern culture, and actually even today, they lived a what? A shame, honor culture. We might ask, what do we mean? People during that time would do their best to do things that would bring honor at all costs and avoid all things that would cause shame. That was typically the way of life they live. Yun ang dapat binubuhay nila, isinasabuhay nila. It's an honor, shame culture. That is why to better understand the expression did not respect man, it would be, be best to interpret it this way. This judge has no shame before people or he cannot be put to shame no matter what he did. In our language, ano tawag dyan? Walang hiya. Or, sa vernacular, makapal ang muka. Kahit ano pa, ang gagawin niya, hindi siya nahihiya. This judge was really shameless. And because of that, this parable describes the worst possible kind of human being. And to top it off, what? Judge siya. Supposedly for God. The verse then proceeds by saying, There was a widow in the city, and she kept coming to him, saying, Give me legal protection from my opponent. Now, after seeing the unrighteous and unjust judge, we are now introduced to a new character in the story in the parable. And the character is no one else but a woman described as a widow. So I'm sure we know what a widow is. Pag widow, namatay na yung asawa niya. And what else was said about this widow? The verse says, There was a widow in that city and she kept coming to him saying, Give me legal protection from my opponent. So what do we see from the verse? We see from the verse that this widow approaches this unjust, unrighteous civil court judge for legal protection. We might ask legal protection from what? Scripture does not really mention. It doesn't mention it. But most likely, as commentaries would say, someone must have what? Defrauded her. Niloko siya. Ginancho siya. Someone must have extracted or illegally obtained money from her. In fact, someone must have really seriously defrauded her that she is what now? Destitute. Talagang naghirap siya. And we say this all because the verse says, there was a widow in that city and she kept coming to him saying, give me legal protection from my opponent. She was so destitute that she keeps coming and coming to this unrighteous judge. Which is actually our Lord's way of pointing out that she was really in a situation where she had to have what was rightfully, rightfully hers. Kaya siya balik ng balik. And to make matters worse, most likely because of the fact that she was so poor, she was so destitute, she apparently had no man in her life. No man in her family. Not a brother. Even a brother-in-law. Wala siyang father na. Wala siyang son. Or any male relative. Or even any male friend to help her out to plead her case because of her situation. She was completely helpless. If ever she had some money, for sure someone would have been able to help her out. But that's not what we see from the verse. She was the only one who pled her case. And what did she do? She did this all the time. So helpless. Brethren, the illustration the Lord Jesus used in this parable is so clear. So clear. As far as Old Testament goes, if not on a legal basis, purely on the basis of mercy, the judge should have done something to care for her. Several times we would find in the Old Testament the responsibility that was commanded by God to what? Take care and look after widows. We would see that in the book of Exodus, Deuteronomy, Isaiah, and many other books. Widows were to be cared for. Clearly, always from the Old Testament, God commanded the widows, needs were to be met. Interesting enough, this judge, sobra talagang wicked, is utterly indifferent for the needs of this widow on all aspects. He really had no 
respect for man. Walang hiya talaga itong judge na to. And according to verse 3, this widow kept coming back to the judge. And as she went to this judge, she would always say, give me legal protection from my opponent. It's also like saying, give me what is mine. In the King James, avenge me. It can also be translated, vindicate me. Justify my complaint. That is why because of this word, we can safely say that this was really a righteous complaint. She had all the right. In legal terms, malakas ang kaso. So, as this was said, how did the story and parable proceed? Verse 4. For a while he was unwilling, but afterward he said to himself, Even though I do not fear God nor respect man, post muna tayo don. Consistent with how this judge was described earlier, we read from the verse that this judge was outright indifferent and wicked. And like what we just said a while back, this judge is the worst kind of human being. This judge is the worst kind of judge we can ever imagine. The verse proceeds by saying, For a while he was unwilling, but afterward he said to himself, Even though I do not fear God nor respect man, Yung nangyari dito ano? Parang yung nangyari sa prodigal son. What happened to the prodigal son? Suddenly, the prodigal son came to his senses. The prodigal son talked to himself. Ano ba tawag doon? Soliloquy ba ang tawag doon? Yung kinausap niya, sarili niya. And yun ang same reaction dito sa judge na to. It came to a point that this man suddenly speaks to himself. He says, Even though I do not fear God, nor respect man, from this statement, we can see that this judge what? Recognizes his own character. He's a self-confessed wretch. Kilala niya, sarili niya. We can see from the statement that he personally admits he has no noble motive whatsoever. Alam niya, nasalbahi siya. But listen closely to what he says. Verse 5, Yet because this widow bothers me, I will give her legal protection. Otherwise, by continually coming, she will wear me out. In the literal, literal Greek, this statement would go something like this. Because she troubles me, she is irritating me. Because of what she is doing, she is already causing me pain. Because of this, I will give her legal protection. The word you know, continually, pag tinignan niya yung sinabi dyan. Otherwise, by continually coming, she will wear me out. Pag tinignan niya yung word na yan, it can also be translated what? As forever. So in a hyperbolic kind of statement, what the judge was saying was this. She will come forever if I don't get rid of her, lest she wears me out. Brethren, this unrighteous, this wicked judge, who has no regard for man, who has no regard and compassion for man, because of the selfish reason that he has so much for himself, because of what the widow was doing, that it already irritates him, it already troubles him, the unrighteous judge, what? Gives in to the request of this widow. So that's actually the parable. That's the story. Now we might ask, what was the Lord teaching in this simple but clear illustration? We would actually understand that in the next verses. Look at verse 6. So important. And the Lord said, Hear what the unrighteous judge said. When the Lord said this, the Lord was like saying, Think about the meaning of this story. Think about the unrighteous judge in the story. Pakinggan yung mabuti. Isipin yung maigi ang sinabi at ginawa ng di makatuwirang hukom na ito. Now, if we really think about it, this judge was wicked and indifferent to God. This judge was likewise, had no compassion and care for the widow. But despite that, he finally did what was right. He did it for purely selfish, self-centered reasons. All because the judge was already troubled and irritated. Now, as the Lord asked them to ponder, as the Lord asks us to think about this, the Lord then directs them to the truth that He would like them and us to learn and understand. Look at verse 7. Now, 
Will not God bring about justice for his elect who cry to him day and night? And will he delay long over them? So, what rules was the Lord teaching? Brothers and sisters, when the Lord Jesus said this, the Lord Jesus was comparing and contrasting the facts and details about the judge to the very truth and character of God. Ito yung tinasabi na parang lesser and greater comparison. Obviously, yung lesser, yung wicked judge. Yung greater is the character of God. The Lord Jesus in His statement was dealing with both extremes. We have here the most wicked, indifferent human being still doing what was right for someone to whom the judge had no feeling or relationship at all. Ginawa pa rin nung judge yung kung anong mabuti for the widow. Not because may relationship siya, but all because self-centered siya. And then comparing it, contrasting it with God. God Almighty who is merciful, gracious, loving, and just. Now, if a judge who is like this will do what is right for someone for whom he has no affection and relation, what more do we think will God who is merciful and just will not do what is right for those who are His chosen children. His children, His elect. His elect who are loved by Him even before the foundation of the world. Most especially to those who cry out to Him day and night in prayer. Hence the statement of verse 7. Now, will not God bring about justice for His elect who cry to Him day and night and will he delay long over them? Brothers and sisters, the elect are represented here by the widow. We are in a sense what? Helpless. We are in a sense at the mercy of our judge. But the judge in this parable is not like God. This judge in this parable is the opposite of God. He is so far from who God is. God always does what is right by his own law. Unlike the judge in this parable. God is always compassionate, merciful, gracious, tender-hearted, and kind. Now, if a wicked, unjust, unloving judge will do what is right, what will a righteous, loving, holy, and just God do? Hence, we see in verse 7, Now shall not God bring about justice for His elect? In other versions, will He not avenge? Will He not vindicate? Will He not justify His elect, those whom He has chosen for salvation? You know what? I'm sure most of us already know that by God's grace, the Lord Jesus promises to us that we will what? Suffer. That's a promise. When we study Scripture, we would find several passages talking about a Christian suffering. Let me give you one or two. Matthew 16, 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. That's a promise of suffering. Diba? If you have been with us in the study of Matthew, we know that following the Lord Jesus, we have to what? Count the cost. Count the cost to the point of what? Taking up our own cross. What does that mean? To the point of death. Kahit na sobrang hirap na. That's the cost of following Christ. The Lord Jesus promises that we will suffer. John 15, 20. Remember the word that I said to you, a slave is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. Again, from this verse, we again see the promise from God. If you say that we are a true Christian, we will what? Suffer. A Christian sufferings come in different shapes, come in different forms. A Christian can suffer spiritually. A Christian can likewise suffer physically. We can be maligned 
We can be persecuted. And what happens when a Christian suffers? And you know what? Bago ko puntahan yun sasabihin ko. Suffering often comes to a Christian when a Christian is what? By God's grace, faithful. When a Christian is faithful. Now, because of this, oftentimes, when we go through an ordeal, when we go through a trial, what do we do? We go to God in prayer as we suffer. Now, when we pray, again, more often than not, when we pray, we do not always what? Get immediate results, right? We don't. When we pray, we don't get results. And because of that, what happens? Yung sinabi kanina sa verse 1. We lose heart. Hence the command that we are not to lose heart. We are not to lose heart. How are we, brothers and sisters? Di ba? Parang, uh, when the rubber really meets the road, talagang iba na eh. Kanina lang, nando kami sa elders meeting, ano? Uh, uh, wala si Brother Peter kanina, no? So, apat na mga sharing ng problema. Wala yung pang limang problema. No? Pero really, uh, during that meeting, parang, uh, pag nasa Viber thread nga, pag nakita niyo yung Viber thread namin, parang, wag na nating tanungin ano itong dinadaanan natin. With, let's just pray. Let's just pray. I'm sure you know, di ba, what uh, some of the elders are going through. And sometimes, sometimes, uh, in our weakness, in our humanity, sometimes gusto mo na lang yung parang sa boxing, you just throw the white towel, di ba? And it's not, not really easy. Would you agree? I don't know what you're going through. I'm sure, di ba? Uh, the very reason we are here right now, may pinlano si God. Maybe there's something na talaga that's been bothering us ilang araw na, ilang linggo na, ilang buwan, ilang taon. And it's as if, it's as if, parang wala. And sinasabi ni Christ, do not lose heart. And not just that, look at this. Ano yung sinabi niya sa verse 7, Will not God bring about justice for His elect who cry to Him day and night? And will He uh, delay long over them? We are reminded of this verse, what? Hindi natutulog ang Diyos. Nung sinabi rito ni Christ na will not God bring about justice for His elect? Can we relate to this? Uh, when we cry out to Him, parang sinasabi natin, Lord, bakit nangyayari sa akin ito? Mas sinisingle out natin sa sarili natin. And sometimes, uh, in my arrogance, ako sin- pinipersonalize ko to, ah, in my arrogance, parang, Lord, di ba? Ganito naman. You know what? As we go through yung trials, as we go through the ordeals, the problems, when at times, things are really crumbling around us na, ano sinabi dito? Kung yung unjust judge, the wicked judge, still did what was best for the widow. What more si God natin? Again, it's, it's, hindi niya siya comparison eh. Actually, pinapakita lang ni Christ dito, look, Ito ang God the Father natin, and ito ka. Don't worry. Do not worry. When we worry, we what? We sin, di ba? Brothers and sisters, sooner or later, we will really begin to understand and comprehend that our definition of answered prayers is not the same as the Lord's definition of answered prayers. Would you agree? Kasi yung answered prayer definition natin, parang iba eh. Ibang iba sa definition niya. Right? And sooner or later, we get to understand that. And um, tina niyo to, if you look at the life of the Apostle Paul, di ba? at one point in Philippians, sinabi niya, I have learned. Alimayin yung paborito ang ano ni, ni La Steph Curry, di ba? yung Philippians 4.13. Di ba? I can do all things through Christ. Pag tinignan mo yung unang part ng verse na yan, ano sinabi niya? I have learned. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Look, it didn't start Kay Apostle Paul, nasa start pa lang, holy na siya. No. From the verse itself, sabi niya, I have learned. 
look, we belong in the same family ni Apostle Paul. Sooner or later, let's pray that the definition of answered prayers would be consistent with how God defines it. The parable of the persistent widow demonstrates that effective prayer requires what? Faithfulness, perseverance, tenacity, consistency. Yun ang definition nito. A genuine disciple must learn that prayer never gives up and is based on absolute trust and faith on who God is. Fervent prayer is important, but the object of the prayer is the most important. Naintindihan natin yung object ng prayer. That's the important truth in this parable na sinasabi ng Lord Jesus natin. We must have the right understanding and truth that about our holy, righteous, merciful, and just God. Kailangan tama ang pagkakaintindi natin sa Kanya. All because kung mali ang pagkakaintindi natin sa Kanya, when we go through an ordeal, when we go through a trial, a suffering, and when we pray, una, dapat yung prayer natin consistent sa will niya. Consistent. Pero I'm sure may nagsasabi sa atin, Brother Rico, sa tingin ko, by God's grace, consistent naman yung prayer ko sa will niya. Okay. Now, what's the next question? Para walang nangyayari. You know what? God knows what is best for us. As hard as it may seem for us right now. Madali sabihin kasi kung right now, things are okay. Yeah? Pero pag nandadong ka sa gitna niyan, Wow! Talagang ang hirap. Diba? But you know what? Sabi ni Christ sa verse 1, Pray. And what? Not lose heart. Not lose heart. Kaya yung sinabi niya, He was telling them a parable to show that at all times, at all times, ha, they ought to pray. And not lose heart. At all times. Ano yung all times na yun? In not so good times, and especially in good times. Madalas kasi, pagka nawawala yung mga concern natin, nakakalimutan na natin eh. Right? That's us. From this verse, we immediately see and learn that Christians are to always pray and not lose heart. And when Christians obey this command, that's actually proof and evidence that we are true disciples of the Lord Jesus. Evidenced by our what? Persistent faith. Persistent faith. Now, as the Lord Jesus said this, as the Lord Jesus commanded that Christians are to be persistent with their prayer, no matter what, that we should not lose heart. Notice sa verse 8, ano yung sinabi niya? I tell you that He will bring about justice for them quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will He find faith on the earth? Just as the Apostle Paul emphasized in his letters, in his epistles, the continual devotion of Christians to prayer. As a way of life for us Christians, the Lord Jesus sort of throws a question to us Christians dito. The Lord in this verse wants us to know if He will find any faithful prayer warriors left on earth when He returns. The question is, when would that be? Yung return niya? Ano sagot doon? We do not know, right? So ano ibig sabihin nun? Which actually communicates the truth that like what was said in verse 1, we should be in prayer all the time, anytime. We don't just become prayerful in some occasions or in some seasons. But we are always prayerful as if the Lord Jesus is about to return tonight or tomorrow. Yun ang mahirap, di ba? If we know that the Lord Jesus is returning tomorrow, I'm sure grabe yung prayer life natin and yung ugali sana natin. Sana. Kaya nga, ano sinabi ni Christ? However, when the Son of Man comes, will He find faith on the earth? Again, katulad nung sinabi natin kanina, yung context. The context of the desire of His disciples to see His second coming. Because of what? Kaya gusto nung disciples, dumating yung point that they were looking forward to the Lord's return. Sabi ni Christ yun eh. Sabi ni Christ, the day will come that you will desire to see 
the coming of the Son of Man. Okay? Anong context? Bakit ganon? They were already suffering. Like us. How many times have you said, ito, kakasabi ko lang to the other day, come Lord Jesus. Right? Di ba? Sinabi ni John, sa so John 21 yan, come Lord Jesus. Di ba? When we're going through trials, we say, Lord, come Lord Jesus. Talaga, sana mag-rapture na. Sana tapos na. Di ba? Are we like that? Di ba? That parang, Lord, ano ba to? Ang sinasabi nga nung context na yon yun. And ano yung mga susunod pa? Susunod pa doon, sadly, as we wait for the Lord's return, there will be false Christ. There will be trials. Hence, the command for us to just patiently wait and pray. Patiently wait and pray. Brothers and sisters, hindi ko alam kung sinasabi niyo sa sarili niyo ngayon, sana hindi na lang nagatay ng PDF. Kakala ko kasi yung promise na sasabihin, it's a promise of ano eh, something else, no? But you know what? This is one of the most beautiful parables for me. What? Uh, I cling to this parable. I cling to this parable. I don't claim it, but I cling to it. We just cling to it. Diba? Kung, I don't know, like what I've said kanina, I don't know what we're going through right now, but you know what? Sabi ni Christ, Persevere. Sabi ni Christ, pray. Sabi ni Christ, do not lose heart. Let's spend a minute or two to really just reflect on all the truths that we just learned from this.